Howdy mates, good afternoon, how are we all doing? It is Thursday, or Friday, excuse me, June 24th, 2022. This is a part two video for today. I actually joined my good friend, Bailey, today. He already is heading back towards the mill, so I figured it was a good opportunity to make a video real quick. So I'm revisiting one of my favorite sites and near my hometown and it was actually this very one this was one of the very places that actually uh, helped inspire my love for interpreting cultural history i'm basically at the bear's mill now you don't see the mill quite yet because facing this direction it brings you to a dam but it was that very dam that allowed the water to diverge and create this, what you call, mill race. It's basically a secondary waterway that brings you to the mill. Now, this mill started, or was built, back in 1847. And it was actually dug out by children who were being paid 50 cents a day during the time. So you probably have to figure that is most likely equivalent to, uh, trying to think. It probably had to be a couple hundred dollars because I can't really think of the conversion right off the top of my head, but you probably figure 50 cents back then wasn't too bad but this mill race does bring you to the structure up here the famous bears mill so a little bit of a background so we go back to 1824 first uh, there was a presidential deed that was signed by president james monroe he was the fifth president of the United States and he actually gave this deed to an individual named Major George. I can't remember his last name though. I'll be sure to put it in the description. But <clears throat> the presidential deed also gave out water rights too to be able to use the water that passes through here. It basically allowed land ownership back then. So, fast forward another mm, 24 or so years, the mill was actually being built. And this was back in um, 1848. Give me a second, you guys. Okay. So, in 1848, this mill was being built as the very structure that it is to this day. So it wasn't until 1849 as to when the mill became an official operation. Now, what's actually fascinating about this building is it's built completely out of black walnut. That's what's used as its uh, framing, basically, which black walnut is rarely ever used in construction. But it's a very durable wood. So that's why it was used. I mean, of course, it's been renovated before. But it's only been renovated maybe just a couple of times ever since it was first built. So one of the first owners had the name Gabriel Bear. He was actually from Germany originally, his family. But instead of it being B-E-A-R, it was B-A-E-R. So, usually back then, a lot of uh, surnames were Americanized, so it just simply changed to Bear. But um, the mill ever since then has probably had about mm, approximately five or six different owners since then. Uh, some of them included C.W. Cromer, uh, even, um, what's his name? Like, Flossie, 
and her her husband, uh, Andrews. That was their last name. His first name just left the top of my head. And Terry and Julie Clark, they were the most recent owners. But now, the mill is owned by Friends of the Bears Mill. And it's also a, um, it's a designated National Historic Site in the United States. So it's, it's a pretty big deal. And it's even owned through the Dark County Parks as well. So you could say that this mill has changed several hands. What's fascinating about this particular mill is when it was under ownership of the Andrews family, uh, they noticed, this was back in 1960, they noticed that the creek seemed very polluted, because it was. So they actually brought their case to the Dark County Courthouse. However, though, uh, it was basically overturned, mostly ignored. So it basically took eight years till the case was finally resolved. So eventually the case, the very same case, it was brought to the Ohio Supreme Court. And as it turned out, the mill owners actually won the case. And so it was the very first time that a city in Ohio and also in the United States was actually held responsible for a pollution matter. So that's some of the history that is here. Yeah, look at that. There you go. Here's the entrance. You can basically see what type of mill this is. They use burr stones and even roller mills. But burr stones back in the 1800s, you can actually see an example right here. They were used to grind flour. That was the most common commodity that was uh, used at the time. But it is up to four, four stories high. But, yeah, as you can see, it is a National Historic Site. Here we go. What's fascinating is the uh, birthstones that I was talking about, they were actually brought over here from France, originally. And it was Gabriel Bear who actually brought them over. And it took about two years to travel there and back. So it took a long time back then, because you figure planes didn't really exist at the time. So it, it was quite the journey. But the Bears Mill actually remains one of the only water, it remains one of the only water operating mills to this day. And it's still in operation too, for uh, grinding flour. So it's... This is a spot well worth visiting if any of you ever come to Dark County, Ohio. And it was actually this one, this was one of the places that actually inspired my love for interpreting cultural history. A lot of great memories here. So, all right, you guys, thanks for watching. Take it easy. And journey on a journey is outwards. Take care, folks. See ya.